Are any of your friends mashers? Or maybe you've been criticized for mashing before. The term mashing can actually be used in a few different ways when it comes to competitive smash. And in this video, we're gonna break them down and learn everything we can about mashing. To learn even more, click on over to ProGuys.com in addition to our pro courses featuring top players like MK, Leo, and Esam. You can take advantage of our Play With Pros platform to get quality coaching from experienced gamers. Now, back to the video. When a player is accused of being a masher, this is a pretty generic term used for playing overly, aggressive, and impatiently. The term refers to mashing the buttons on their controller randomly with no thought. And for some casual players, this is actually a method of playing the game. Between the C stick, A button, and B button, it would be not entirely useless to simply hold the left stick towards an opponent and mash face buttons. But obviously, in a more competitive setting, this will be very ineffective. When the term mashing is used to describe a playstyle, and more competitive players, it usually refers to the lack of downtime and waiting in between a player's actions. For example, a player will always mash a ground attack after landing with an aerial, and then spot dodge after that attack only to mash another button out of the spot dodge. At higher competitive levels, the term is more of a joking jab at players who are very aggressive and put on a lot of pressure through approaches and safe whiffs. If you feel like you're a masher and it's actually holding back your gameplay, try to isolate your decisions. Focus on your gameplay and make an attempt to consciously choose everything you do. This will help you break the habit of autopiloting one action after another. Now, from the other perspective, how can you counter a mashing player? You know, it can sometimes be overwhelming to find your openings against aggressive characters with good frame data. Just when you think it's your turn, the opponent either dodges or throws out yet another attack before you can get in. First and foremost, you need to understand what's punishable and what's safe, as well as understand what your options are to deal with things. If your opponent is throwing out a lot of attacks that are punishable, the problem may be that you're reacting too late. In this scenario, you can either focus specifically on the attack you're expecting so you can't react fast enough to punish it, or aim to punish the next thing your opponent does. Usually, if your opponent does something safe, the next thing they do won't be. For example, whipped aerials on shield can be safe, but your opponent might then throw throw out an unsafe tilt or a spot dodge. So wait a moment and prepare to punish that second option. Okay, so we mentioned that mashing has multiple definitions in competitive smash, and the other main definition is far more literal. Mashing buttons is a common means of escaping certain situations in smash, such as grabs, shield breaks, and burials. When you find yourself in these situations, the game will let you escape sooner relative to how many buttons you mash. This is extremely important for surviving certain setups such as Banjo's down throw and Inkling's roller. As a neat touch, Ultimate actually shows an animation to represent your mashing. So, does the game read your mashing inputs? And what is the best way to mash in each situation? You know, there are two different kinds of mashing inputs, stick directions and button inputs. Stick directions refer to the left stick being aimed in any direction, and buttons refer to any button or trigger being pressed. Stick directions are counted on every frame, meaning that if you rotate the control stick as fast as possible, you'll get a maximum of 60 stick mash inputs per second because the game runs at 60 frames per second. Button input mashing is a bit interesting. Buttons actually have a stronger strength in how much they influence your escape. At 1.8 times the strength of stick mashing, so actually 80% stronger. This would initially imply that button mashing is far more superior. However, every time you mash a button, a null frame activates on the next frame where no mashing input will be counted. Because of this, you can only input a maximum of 30 button mashing inputs per second. Looking at the math, 60 times 1 equals 60, and 1.8 8 times 30 equals 54. So with perfect mashing, the stick is still more effective, but for humans, it's more practical to go for the button inputs. Additionally, no two inputs will be counted simultaneously, and button inputs will out-prioritize stick directions if they are inputted on the same frame. Before version 3.0.0, there was actually a method called AB Smash Mash, which allowed the AB Smash input to out-prioritize the null frame for a potential 60 frames of 1.8 strength inputs per second, but this was patched. 
there are a few physical techniques that can be used to achieve the best mash for each method. For buttons, a common method is to rub or swipe your right thumb up and down across the face buttons as fast as you can. This is the most convenient method as it does not require you to adjust your grip on the controller, but you may achieve a faster mash by rubbing multiple fingers over the face buttons instead. Some players also prefer to set their D-pad to attack inputs to rotate it for mashing. There are also some moves that require you to match only one face button. In these cases, it will be convenient to use your right thumb, but for the fastest match, you may be better off using your index finger over the button. In either case, you should test this match both relaxed and tensing up to see which gives you the best results. For stick inputs, the fastest way to cycle through multiple directions is by rotating the stick in a circle, like with buttons. The most convenient way to do this is with your left thumb, but you may get a faster rotation with more inputs if you adjust your grip and rotate the stick with your dominant palm. In order to practice mashing and test which method works for you, the best method we've seen is to set your percent to 999 in training mode and put an opposing CPU Wario on neutral special. Count how many bytes Wario takes before you are launched to rate your mash. So we've concluded that it's generally more practical to mash buttons to escape situations the fastest. But speed isn't the only factor when mashing. Against burials and moves like Yoshi's Egg Lay, the action you perform immediately after escaping can put you in an even worse position. If you're aggressively mashing face buttons, it's very easy to accidentally input an aerial or special move as you escape, which can be very punishable or make it impossible to recover off stage. To avoid this, you can use stick mashing to sacrifice a bit of speed in exchange for avoiding an intended input. Or you can react to and anticipate the timing of your escape, which takes lots of experience. You know, in some cases, you may also want to intentionally delay or slow down your mash. A good example is Banjo's down throw to up tilt at high percents. His up tilt will be a true confirm to opponents who mash out quickly, but it actually won't connect while they're still buried. This creates 50-50 situations where you're going to need to outguess your opponent. Against grabs, you can mash aggressively without much worry, as you'll be in a period of stun even if you escape the grab and there's no benefit to delaying your mash out. There are actually a few ways you could be released from a grab though. When you successfully mash out of a grab, you'll go into what is known as a grab release animation. There are two types of grab releases. The first and most basic is a ground release. If your character's feet are not touching the ground, or if you input jump or up at the time of the release without being pummeled, you enter an air release. An air release will send you backwards into the air. Can you get any advantage off of a grab release? In Super Smash Bros. Brawl, there were actually plenty of guaranteed grab release follow-ups, perhaps most significantly allowing Mart to infinitely release and re-grab Ness and Lucas. and Smash Ultimate, the leg frames have been adjusted to remove any grab release follow-ups besides those involving items or hazards that are already present at the time of the grab. So because of this, it's almost always better to simply throw your opponent rather than intentionally grab release them. But in some cases, if you manage to grab someone when they have no double jump and their feet don't touch the ground to refresh it, you can force an air release off stage to gimp some characters in rare situations.
So, are you a masher? We hope that these tips will help you press better buttons at the right times and get the advantage on your rivals. Be sure to mash that subscribe button and notification bell to keep up with everything from Pro Guides.